Last time we did Psalm 22, and then we had a very good conversation about spiritual gifts and gifts in general. And today, um, so it's uh, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. And this is this is famous song. People know it, they memorize it. There are posters with and banners with the, with lines, some lines from this uh, from this psalm. So, who'd like to read it for us? The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and the cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Okay, so... Uh you probably notice that what we are doing in our Bible studies now, rather than just looking at the historical context and the language, the grammar, uh, so we do something that is called Lex Lectio Divina, uh, which means divine reading. So it's a medieval practice when you read the scriptures and then you meditate and then you let the word of God kind of resonate with you. It's not just, you know, to inform yourself uh, of the, you know, to, to get information. It's not just about getting information. It's also about actually experiencing, you know, uh, when you let the Word of God to read you, right? So it's not just you reading the Word of God. The Word of God is reading you, is interacting with you, right? So that is why... We pause, we meditate, we go over the lines again, just, you know, trying to interact with the Word of God, right? It's not just text, it's something alive. Well, the first thing that is on the surface, it's uh, the Lord is my shepherd, this analogy, this comparison to shepherd and sheep. And uh, I don't know much about sheep, but I read a book on sheep. <laughs> And I know that uh, um, sheep depend on the shepherd a lot for protection and provision. For example, in verse 2, when he says, he leads me beside still waters. And I had no idea that, uh, that sheep, that their you know, face is designed in such a way that... Uh, if you drink water from uh, not still waters, if they drink water from waters that are not still, then the water gets in their nose, right? So that is why they need still water. So it's essential, right? And when you think about, you know, anointing, uh, so we know that uh, uh, anointing with oil, sometimes it's metaphorically, so it just, you know, Kings are anointed, prophets, you know, uh, but 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 it also heals uh, heals uh, is, is, uh, when sheep are attacked by some you know bugs, uh, so that uh, oil kind of heals them and protects them as well. You know, uh, if if uh, if you're like me who is not a you know, farm boy. So many of those things I need to learn, you know, read about them. But, you know, but it looks like he takes care of me completely of all my needs, right? So this is the idea. So he takes care of, you know, providing food for me and water and protecting me. So this table before me in the presence of my enemies uh, that's basically my enemies are watching how I how I'm feast, feasting. I have a feast. I you know have celebration. Table is prepared. 
and my enemies watch that, but they cannot do much about about that, right? So this valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And again, rod and staff, it's symbol of protection and authority. So, you know, because this is how you, you can save using those instruments, right? And then you can protect against wolves, right? So, so these are two instruments that protect and direct us. So, what is the, what, what is, what is, what is the Lord saying to you in this song? Uh, if we practice Lectio Divina, if we meditate it, over it. I, uh, I use this psalm often to, uh, when I'm feeling anxious or off balance or even angry, um, I find it a way to center. So another name for it maybe is happy place, but it helps me find my happy place. <laughs> okay. Thinking about lying down in green pastures and beside still waters and sitting at table with the Lord and just the comfort and the solace and the, the everything's going to be okay. Solace. It's, it's a very calming. Yeah. It's a very it evokes calming. a sense of peace. Yes, and protection and just everything's going to be okay. So. Mm -hmm. It's a, happy, it's a happy place. Okay, yeah. Yes, I understand how it can be. So, okay. Verse 5 stood out for me um, about the table and the presence of my enemies. It just, he's always there. In the, evilness of the world cannot stop you from participating in enjoying his presence. Right, right. So your enemies, they watch you, they see you. I remember a, a cartoon, a Christian cartoon, and uh, there is a sheep at the table ready to have lunch, you know, uh, nice lunch. And then the wolves are watching, you know, the sheep, but cannot touch the sheep, and the sheep is kind of just <laughs> enjoying its meal, you know, table, right, in the presence of the enemies. Enemies cannot harm you, right? That, that's a very good point, Kelly, right? Any, anybody else would say that it's, uh, uh, the, 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 that you use this psalm or parts of this psalm to find uh, peace and uh, uh, to solace, you know, calm down? Would, would that be similar experience? I had, a situ I, I had some situations, unfortunately, I had some situations where I, I felt fear. Uh, my life was in danger, and this sound brought me peace and comfort me because uh, it's a lot, it says a lot that God is with you. This is the main idea that He's with you. And I see here Holy Spirit because your mercy, your uh, goodness or how, how you translate uh, Goodness and mercy. Oh, yeah. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. The Holy Spirit, it's the work, of the Holy Spirit. the work of the Holy Spirit. Anybody else? Uh, uh, so I, I like the song. I, I think it, it speaks uh, to me at least about putting aside the cares of the world and not worrying so much of all things <coughs> secular. We tend to do that a lot. I know I have, and things bother you, and they're just always on your mind and worried, and we really shouldn't be. But uh, this song is uh, an opportunity for worship and giving thanks at the same time, because David's acknowledging all that he has received, and probably uh, at least speaking for myself, sometimes you forget all of the blessings and forget to give thanks as much as you should. So it's really a, 
a two-way song for me. So sheep is not very clever, so and uh, needs to be led. So when you acknowledge, when 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 you say don't care about the world, it's kind of like assuming this kind of posture of Lord, I don't understand a lot of things, and probably cannot. I trust you that you understand everything, right? It's like becoming a child, little child again. And, and sheep are vulnerable as well. Vulnerable. Need, need, they need protection. Yeah, they can't defend themselves very well. Mm -hmm. They do not have teeth and claws, right? And they're not just tigers or lions. John? I found um, a couple of things that were interesting to me. Um, the entire song is about past, present, and future. So one, yeah. Um, the second part is that uh, it shows that through the first part of the past and into the, the present that there is comfort and protection and peace. And then through the latter part that it is not temporal but it is permanent or everlasting and that it brings us through, uh, as we just discussed, that there's going to be t periods of the valley of death that we won't always be with the Lord. That's the most important part of it I got out of it. Right, 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 right. So, problem? What, what, what do you think? What? I'm listening. Huh? I don't have anything additional to add. Oh, maybe it shouldn't be additional. And it looks like, as you look at this psalm, it looks like the agency belongs to the Lord. So, you, I almost, I mean, almost everything that happens to me, He does that. He makes me lie down in Greek pastures. He leads me. He leads me in the path of righteousness. You are with me. You prepare a table. You anoint my head. And I is basically, I will not fear evil. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But you can see that the Lord kind of like is dominating. He is, he is active, right? So, Kevin, uh, Kristen. As we've been talking about being mature versus infants in Christ in the last few months or whatever, it reminds me of um, when I was a church secretary, my boss, the pastor, told me about something called moral therapeutic deism, I believe is a term. Yes, that's correct. Like your therapist. And so this reminds me of this, uh, this which, so um, I think this is kind of endemic to American Christianity that God is my therapist versus being a Christian soldier. So I just would encourage everybody who is over 18 to maybe examine themselves and see, am I looking at God as my therapist? Of course, there are times for that. Or am I, uh, you know, basically I just encourage people to examine themselves and see are they willing to lay down their lives for Jesus and be martyred for him. It's, as the persecution grows in this country and being just willing in general to lay down their life for them and not be self-centered in their faith. Okay, okay. Yeah, thank you. I think some people misinterpret some of this. Um, it says, they, it's like uh, money is the root of all evil. Notice the, the love of money is the root of all evil. I've heard people look at this part of um, verse 4 and go, it's the valley of death. It's, it's the valley of the shadow of death. It's the shadow of death. It's not the valley of death. That's in right. the valley, we have hills and dips in our lives and those are the valleys. And the shadow of death is a darkness and it's something that can loom over you and uh, engulf you. So there's a lot of symbolism there. I think mm -hmm. people miss that. 
Right. You know, there's a funeral, so they hear this, and it's like, oh, we're down in a scary valley of death. No, it's the shadow. Uh, good point, very good point, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so the funeral component of it is always the one that I, maybe I'm somewhat challenged with that, because it's like, in many ways, death is not, I mean, it sounds horrific, but in reality, it's necessary. And it's, it's a rejoicing of the, the fact that here's a person of faith, a person who believes in Christ and resurrection, and so now they're passing from everything of this world into that hope, mm-hmm. real hope and waiting for Jesus. So that's why I kind of, I struggle with this one in that way. Well, the last yes, line, that definition of that. the last line in there is, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, literally, it's the celebration. Yeah. Eternal life. Yes. Yeah. Like eternal, eternal life. life. Yeah. Eternal. No, the celebration of life. Don't no fear. Don't no fear. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, the, and the life of uh, our bodies is like shadow. Mm-hmm. Of the shadow. Right. Yeah. But then we see he sees he sees himself in, in God's house. That's amazing. Yeah. So so. So, f- for him, the valley of the shadow of death, it's, of course, not death itself, right? So, it's difficulties, it's uh, darkness, as you said, right? So, because he says, well, you are with me, I will fear no evil. But we use this in funerals probably because it's so comforting, right? So, that is why people use it in, uh, in funerals. But, but, but here, it's not about death. It's about difficulties and, you know, shadow of death, darkness. Yeah, good, good, good point. I remember two things uh, that Jesus says that my sheep know my voice. So, and uh, the reason I remember that, I saw a funny video on YouTube. And a lady, lady who does jogging in the morning, she was running through the forest. And all of a sudden, more than 100 sheep started following her. Now, what happened, and she couldn't get rid of, of them. She was running, and they were following her, like whenever she would run. So what, what, what happened, uh, their shepherd, and uh, their, shepherd, their shepherd, I don't know, he went away. You know, I don't know, he was busy with something. And when sheep, when they lose the sight of their shepherd, they follow any other, you know, human being. And she happened to run by, and they just started following her. They kind of thought that she was their shepherd. And, and she was running away, and they are very good runners, you know. She <laughs> can run well. They were running, running after, after her, you know. So, so but... Their personal best record. Probably, but you should have seen her. She was just like, you know, she was completely puzzled what is happening. What, she was looking at them, what do you want from me, what do you want from me? And she was trying to run away from them, and they were just fall More than 100 sheep, like, in the forest, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a show. But in any event, uh, she, wasn't, she wasn't their shepherd, she was wrong shepherd. So that is why we need to know our shepherd, right? And not just run after anybody who looks like a shepherd, right? (laughs) Yeah. Well, let us pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for being our shepherd. We want to follow you, Jesus. We don't want to follow false shepherds. We don't need any false shepherds. We know, Jesus, that you are a good, good shepherd. You love us. You take care of us. You lead us in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Um, We will fear no evil, even if we go, even if we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. For you are with us, your rod and your staff, they comfort us. You prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. You anoint our head with oil. Uh, our cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and uh, we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.